Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the final part of the Bad Rap series. In this series, I've been taking a look at different elements of astrology and how, say for example, some of the signs get a bad rap. And in that video, if you had a look at Bad Rap 1, you'll see that there are some signs that have a bad reputation and unfairly so. People are missing out on the great good that lies in those signs. In the second part, I looked at debilitation. Debilitation is a word that frequently gives people cause to feel bad about their chart and then subsequently feel bad about themselves, right? So I wanted to turn that around and I wanted to say, look, let's try and reframe some of these things. Let's try and see some of these things in a different way. And today in Bad Rap Part 3, I thought we were going to be looking at combustion. It turns out we are not looking at combustion. We are looking at astrology as a whole and why astrology as a whole has a bad reputation. And the reason we're now doing that is because this morning at about six in the morning, I had these ideas start to come through and I'm like, oh, okay, let's do that then. Uh, you know, the, the chakra system came into mind. Um, symbols and astrology and systems of thought and all these things in my mind and I thought oh okay yes there's an idea here all right let's do that so I think we'll just dive straight in I, I was actually going to take a look at um, some of the comments I will actually have a quick we're gonna have a quick quick look at some of the comments from last time you guys have the best comments I have to say you're such thoughtful and intelligent people I'm the luckiest YouTuber to have such a great audience. Um, it feels fantastic doing this work and interacting with all of you. So thank you to everybody who commented on last time's video. I didn't actually write back to anyone just yet. I might do that tomorrow. I thought I'd talk about it a little bit um, in today's video. And some of you are right on board. Um, you know, you really understood uh, what I was doing there. And, and thank you as well for realizing that, you know, me being positive, I'm not trying to say that there's no negative, right? It's always a fine line to tread and sometimes thinking things can come across as too positive. I don't want that at all. I know what it is to paper over the cracks with an affirmation and that that stuff doesn't work, repeating affirmations and being positive and all that. I know that that doesn't work a lot of the times, um, but where I can show you original thinking or some type of thinking that will take you somewhere else or that will suspend you from negativity and just give you a holiday into another type of thinking. I, I will do that. Um, but let's, let's have a look here. So the comments, everyone, I mean, you've put such amazing comments. Alex, FYI, lol, you forgot Stevie's sunglasses. Yes, I forgot Stevie's sunglasses. I drew a little practice diagram beforehand and I did put his sunglasses on and it looked really bad. So I had to take it off. It looked like Bill Gates actually. So I had to take it off. I thought I'm just going to have to do it really plain. So yep, I know. Um, I'm still learning to draw. I, will, I should take classes or something. I really need to do something about that. All right. So Raj had a good comment where I think you mentioned the thing about um, being too positive. I'll just make sure I'm plugged in. Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the thing about being too positive and how that doesn't work. And I wanted to applaud you. Some of the things you said here were fantastic. I definitely don't try to put myself down anymore, which was admittedly a silly thing I did when I first got into astrology. And I do try to make the most of things. And I don't even really look at my chart that much anymore. I feel I'm letting go. And that's really brilliant. And I had to read that out because that is just so wonderful. Corey, your comment as always, you've always got the best comments. Um, and yes, I mean, I'm, I'm right on board here with everything that you've got to say. And what I'm gonna do is I will hop on here and, um, and read everything and write back to all of you. But let's take a look now. Let's, let's take a look at this topic here because it is really interesting. Why does astrology as a whole have a bad reputation? Why? You know, and it, it is, it does. It has a bad reputation and it's the kind of thing where 
yeah, in this modern world, you know, you go to a dinner party and, you know, someone's asking you, oh, are you an ast- what do you do for a living? Do you, do you say astrologer? Do you just say astrologer? I will evolve to that point. I, I'm working on it. I'm not quite there yet. But I say Vedic life coach and, you know, I'll talk about the Vedic system and, you know, Ayurveda. And most people go, yeah, I know Ayurveda. I love all that. And um, yoga, everyone knows yoga. Everyone knows the chak- chakra system. So, sure. Um, you know, that's, that's always a nice way in. And then you can kind of bring in the cycles of time, which is a nice way of saying astrology. <laughs> uh, but, you know, in trying to bring this to mainstream people, we have to find ways, don't we? It's not easy. Unless, of course, you're very established and, you know, you, you've been an astrologer for 20 years and that kind of thing. I mean, well, no problem there. Um, I guess... For me, transitioning out of a traditional mainstream career into this, you know, um, I've had to find my feet a little bit. But this topic of, let's get back to the question on the screen. Why does astrology as a whole have a bad rap? And I've got a short answer here for you. So for those of you who just want the short answer and then, you know, you want to be on your way, my short answer is because it's often used as a system of control, right? That's the short answer, all summed up in that one little sentence. It's a system, it's often used as a system of control. Um, So if that's all you came for, you're very welcome to head off and watch something else on the internet. The other thing is that this will be astrological in nature, but it's going to be more, um, I don't want to say coaching, it kind of is coaching. We are going to look at the chakra system uh, today. So if you don't like spiritual stuff or you know if you find that irritating i've heard comments on the internet of people finding uh you know spiritual type content irritating or annoying or it's it's mumbo jumbo and this kind of thing it's fine i totally respect that for you um but then this isn't the video for you so don't you know watch it you know there are much better things out there to to be watching all right let's get into the long answer now the long answer will require a cup of tea Um, sitting down for a bit look at that I've burnt seven minutes already so (laughs) um, you're definitely going to want to uh, or have I burnt seven minutes I don't know the time of thing anyway um, settle in for the long answer because we're going on a journey is what I'm trying to say it's going to be fun it's going to be interesting it might be a bit weird but you know me I like doing things that are interesting and unusual Okay, let's have a look at the chakra system. I'm going to draw a diagram as I like to do. And this is a person you will see who's possibly wearing flares. Might be from the 1970s, I don't know. But it's definitely a person. How are we all, by the way? Are you having a nice day wherever you are? I hope so. Right, so I'm going to draw the chakras on here one two three oops I drew them a bit close together doesn't matter they're not that close okay what have we here the seven chakras right first root chakra second sacral third which is I think it's Manipura isn't it the heart obviously at the heart. I like to draw an actual little heart because it is different to all the other ones. Um, We've got the throat, the third eye, Ajna, if I've got that right, crown. I really need to learn all their proper names, but I do, I know the the system. Having studied it um, extensively through many teachers and my favorite of all the teachers is Caroline Mace. And I'm going to link below to the energetics of healing. Please do, if you like this, what I'm talking about today, watch her two-part series. I recently re-watched it. I'm sure I've linked to her this series in past videos. Um, and, and I'll probably link to it again because it's that good. And I just keep drawing out uh, amazing, just jewels coming out of there constantly. I, every time I re-watch it, and I don't watch it that often, but I mean, it's kind of like once a year or, or if, if I'm going through a big transition or a big change or a big shift or something like that, it's a most wonderful guide that has really helped me 
um, navigate certain times in my life. So let's have a look at the chakra system and I'm going to draw out um, what these are. So I'm going to have a one word thing here. So we've got first, how about we do this? How about I draw first, second, third, we have the fourth, heart. And we're going to have, uh, I might put, um, I might put these on the other side actually. Fifth, five, six and seven. So what have we got here as the first? So I'm just going to write tribe. This is your tribe, it's your family. It's many, right? It's lots of people. It's even things like your national identity, okay? Second, what have we got here? One on one. One-on-one, one-on-one -on -one relationships, right? One-on-one -on -one relationships, so really with your partner, your intimate partner, can be with things as well. So what things? Money is a thing, isn't it? Um, even something like alcohol, addiction is here, right? So that's an interesting thing. Uh, also, our weapons are here. And as Caroline Mace talks about our weapons, you know, they're, they're around the waist, right? Where, where are the guns kept? They're kept around the waist, aren't they? So that's a really interesting thing there. The third, we've got, now it's self-esteem, but I'm going to put relationship with self, self-relationship, right? And then we come up to, so self-relationship, what's, what's a relationship with yourself? Well, if you've got like um, good self-esteem, that, that's housed here, good healthy self-esteem. And you know yourself, you know who you are, and you're okay to let other people have their opinions and you're okay to have your opinions and it's, you know, you can be you and they're free to be them. It's that kind of thing. Um, fourth. Okay, so that's, I'm going to put here heart, love, and no reason. All right, fourth, heart, love, and no reason. That's here. Now fifth, right, we've got expression. And that's really interesting because that fits um, five uh, which is Leo expression fifth house that that fits that I mean this does kind of fit that I I am going to I have done a little bit of study about how does this match with um, the astrology chart there's more work I need to do on that um, before I share analytics oh, I could put vision I've put analytics here Mm, six but vision really actually I should probably write the word vision doesn't matter you can swap that out and then light at the top okay light at the very top but really what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at this side here in this video we're going to be looking at this journey here typically with the chakra system you've got um, kind of starlight or light coming down here and now what are we drawing from the earth we're drawing earth energy uh, you know here so we're drawing earth energy up here to meet the heart and we're bringing light from here to meet the heart and the heart blends the two it's a really incredible thing what the heart does and that's love right and, that, and that's love is the most amazing thing there is love is the only thing that's real only love is real and that's a brian weiss quote um, and it's true only love is real also there is no opposite to love okay that's another thing that we're going to be taking a look at but we draw earth energy from here and we draw and we bring starlight down here now as someone who's watching an astrology video who's come to me through astrology i know that you're extremely proficient at what's going on up here. You get light 
you've got vision, expression, you're probably terrific at expressing as well, or that appeals to you, um, or you love art and music and beauty and all that kind of thing. You are a person who has pretty much mastered this, right? Where you may need assistance or work or time or effort is, is in bringing the earth energy up to the heart, okay, and manifesting your physical reality. So if, let's say, for example, finances are a challenge, right, and that's second chakra, perhaps where you live, perhaps you keep moving all the time, perhaps you, and that's a first chakra issue, so it might be something out with your first chakra, right? Perhaps you just don't have confidence. You know that you have to do a spiritual business. You know you have to follow your dream. You know you have to change something, right? Yet it's really hard and, and, and you just don't have confidence in yourself. And believe me, I've, yep, all of these, oh, everything. <laughs> I've been looking at all of these things and uh, yes, tick, 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 I, I'm all this. So this is our work to do, right? my br very very brief overview of the chakra system so I've got on the slides this note which I'm going to read out journey the journey of life is is about maturation we are maturing the heart so that we are capable of true love right and, and, and living in love if, if we can gosh amazing could you imagine if we could just do that all the time um, so in order to mature this heart of ours you're going to have to go on some initiations, right? And what we're going to look at is the initiations of the first, second and third chakra. I'm not going to deal with the top three. We're just looking at bringing that earth energy up to the heart. And we're just looking at, we're just looking at one, two and three. That's it today. So I'm going to put up here, mature heart. Let's have a look. Yeah, okay. I'm going to draw the little, our little stick figure person who's wearing flares, who comes from the 70s. <laughs> At least I don't have to draw sunglasses this time. Wow, I tell you. That was a challenge and I tried, but it didn't work out. Okay, all right, let's have it. Let's put a heart here. One, two, three. Okay, so the heart is the place of no reason. No reason. This is the place of no reason. Reason is not going to help you here. If anything, it might muddy the waters unnecessarily. It might cause a jangle. This is a place of no reason. Nothing's needed here. Now what's good here? What are the great things? <clears throat> what are the great things? So we've got freedom, courage, and a love that knows I'll put that nose, no opposite. <clears throat> In this place of no reason, you will find freedom, courage, absolutely courage. And I think in the last video, I mentioned that the French word for the heart is core, which is the root of courage. It's kind of the same word. And then we've got a love that knows no opposite or even opposition how about that but I think let's just stick with opposite because that I know for sure so how do you get to this place now you will require an initiation of these three chakras in order to get to this place in order to be here so the first one is I'm going to put second, I'm going to put third, oh dear, it's getting a bit messy, that's all right. <clears throat> so the first is tribal identity. You 
will have to give up your tribal identity, right? Because a tribal identity is separation. And that doesn't work here. This thing, this place of no reason is all about union. It's all about unification. It's all about take the other as the self, right? So that ain't gonna work here. Tribal identity is not gonna work here. Family as well, family stuff isn't particularly going to work here. And you know, there are so many marriages where people are still hanging on to their family of origin, uh, conditioning, patterning, you know, and they're not able to fully love the other because they're like, well, my parents never did it that way, and but you're different, and you know, there's all this kind of, no, you have to let go. If, if you want to be in that place of no reason, in that place of true love, you're going to have to let go of tribal identity, tribal stuff, right? N your national identity as well. Uh, I know someone actually who's getting married and there's a big problem between, you know, she's Greek and her partner is British and, and there's a lot of um, issue about the fact that he's not allowing her culture to be represented um, in the wedding ceremony. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely causing some big issues there. Um, let's have a look at the second. Weapons. Right, I'm going to put weapons. And I'm going to say physical and verbal. Oh, that's not fitting on there. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll just put V-E-R. You know what I'm saying. Right? Here, second. Weapons. Physical and verbal. In order to get here, to this place, you don't have to put down your weapons. No weapons. You're not allowed. They don't, they, it doesn't work here, right? So you've got to put down your tribal identity. You've got to put down your weapons. Physical, verbal, doesn't matter, right? If there's any revenge, if there's any vengeance, if there's any, you know, any of that, no, it doesn't work, doesn't work. It's not going to work. You've got to put it all down. You've you got to let that stuff go. And the third, what's the third? I'm going to put self, self-information. I hope these are readable. I don't even know. <laughs> it's kind of readable on my, on my thingy. How are we doing for time? 22 minutes. <gasps> it's going to be a long one. Oh, don't worry, I'll do another thingy. Um, I'll put in another memory card. Self-information, right? Self-information is not going to work in this place of no reason. You're going to have to put it all down. Now, what do I mean by self-information? This is where astrology comes in. And I have a feeling that it's going to cut. How about we let it cut while I draw a new diagram? We just do a little bit of chit-chat in between. So I'm going to scrub this out and do a new diagram. But yeah, all this stuff has been occurring to me because I have been basically re-looking at Caroline Mace. I've, I've picked up her work again. I'm, I've got Anatomy of the, Se of, of the Spirit. Caroline Mace, it's just it's propping up the camera. <laughs> I'm going to be taking that out maybe tonight and having another reread. Of, the chapters are beautiful. She has this series of questions, and I'll put a link to the book below as well so that you've got that as well. She has these questions at the end of each chakra that she gets you to ask yourself so that you can check in to determine the health of your own chakra system. They're really brilliant questions. So I will definitely link to that below. But let's take a look at this concept of self-information. You're going to have to let it go. You are absolutely going to have to let it go. And Suraj, I was amazed to see that you wrote that in your thing, that I'm learning to let go. Yes, this is the thing to get good at. And believe me, I'm working at this myself all the time. This is definitely going to cut out. You can see it's gone to 24 minutes. I'll just write down self. Apologies, the camera got cut. I think I said the word self, and then I wrote the word information at the top headline here, and I brought my little diagram back in. Now, self-information. So I would have been talking about... I have to go back. I have to go back and have a look. I mean, yeah, entering this place of no reason, the heart, no reason. 
and believe me if you're if you're only living up here in the mind uh, th this would be a very uncomfortable space right if all you do is live in the mind and that's it it would not be fun being here at all it would be very uncomfortable right um, mind body spirit you know I mean if you've neglected the body you neglected the spirit all you have is mind this you won't want to go there and that's fine there, there's no problem with that uh, it doesn't mean you know and that's another point I wanted to make things like um, when I was talking about the initiations of these first three chakras and that you know you'll be initiated and one of the things is giving up the tribe in that journey of and and it could be tribal identity, like what country you belong to or something like that. But, you know, it is also things like moving out of home. Or it is, um, it is the boundaries that change between you and your family. Actually, the security guard in my building, he told me a terrific story about this. I'm just going to share it with you very quickly because it's such a good first chakra story about tribal boundaries shifting. He talked about the fact that he lived in this very, very full house with brothers and sisters and he didn't have his own room and he didn't have his own cupboard and eventually he decided, you know, I'm going to get all my clothes from all the different cupboards that it's in and get all my stuff and he, he kind of lived in the shed outside and he talked about how there was never any privacy and nobody ever knocked on doors and you know, everyone just was in each other's pockets all the time and he said that my whole life changed he said when I was about 17 years old and he said my dad walked up the little steps to that shed of his that he built out the back and he said he knocked on the door and he said that like my whole life changed with that one knock on the door you know he, he got this kind of uh, respect of his, his personal space and his boundary and all that kind of thing such a good story Right, so uh, we're looking at information. So I was saying that what, what can you not bring to this place of reason, right? So you can't bring your national identity. You can't bring your weapons, right? You can't be attacking anyone. You can't be blaming anyone. You can't be, um, you know, it's their fault. Like verbally, physically, any kind of weaponry, attack, right? The energy of attack. And that's a funny thing because sometimes we do attack in order to protect ourselves and believe me this is something I'm studying a lot right now so I'm going to get my head around it but anyway um, third chakra you cannot take self information right so you can't take your tribal identity nothing that separates none of that's going to work because the heart is all about union it's all about uniting it's all about taking the self as the other it's all about taking taking even you know taking in a problem Taking, you take it, you go, you know what, this is all me. And it's taking responsibility. It's, um, it's amazing what the heart can do and what the heart can alchemize and what's possible here and the healing that's possible. Absolutely incredible. So you can't take self-information. All right, what forms of self-information are there? Opinions, right? And these are opinions of your family, these are opinions of people around you, co-workers, anybody, any, any kind of opinion. You can't take information from systems. Okay, and now we have finally arrived at the bit where I'm going to talk about astrology. Finally, we got here, yay. Right, so information from systems. So what kind of systems? Now I'm going to include Maya Briggs. Because this was, Maya Briggs is the first system that I got plugged into as a university student. And then later in uh, my career in companies and all that kind of thing, you know, they would test me. And I had to go undergo various tests of all sorts. So Maya Briggs, right, that's the first system that, that I got um, psychoanalyzed by. We've got psychological diagnosis. I'll just put psychology here. But psychology, that's another one. It's another thing. 
it's a system, right? It's, it's a way of and things like um, Murray Bowen, family systems approach, all that kind of thing. And these are beautiful systems and they help us so much. And this is why we get attached to them. We get attached, we, we get attached because this system has brought us some healing, has brought us some relief, has brought us closer to that heart space. We worship it. We think, oh my God, this is amazing. This, is, this has brought me relief. This has helped me. This is, wow, I love this system. You know, and, and I've received healing from it. And yes, you have received healing from it, but don't get attached, right? And because there's, there's more growth to do. I'm going to put here, so what other systems are there? There's systems of divination. So I'm going to put the word signs here. Signs. So what kind of signs? Numbers. Isn't that a classic? Don't you just love it when it's like, you know, 2222 on your oven clock? Or, and, and everyone's got their number system. I'm just going to make sure we're okay. We've got a new card and my on the audio yes I am sorry I just had a moment of paranoia here because sometimes things get missed yeah it's all recording we're good okay whoops right signs numbers okay so we've all got our favorite numbers we've all got these numbers where it's like you know and, and, and sometimes we'll want to make a decision on that um, and I've got some significant stories of things that I've done I made a really big move um, across town and, and because I saw the number 13 and you know I just thought yep that's my number I'm doing it um, so numbers that's a really big one I do like the number 13 I have other numbers as well numbers change in my life that at that time 13 was the big thing I have different numbers in operation at the moment though um, but yeah numbers songs you know a lot of people, and I know a lot of people do this, they'll be in the car and they'll turn on the radio and they'll be like, okay, universe, give me a message. And whatever song comes through, they'll interpret meaning from the song, right? And we all do this. Some people do it more than others, actually. And there is a psychiatric term for people who do do this because there are some people who do it more than others. I, can't remember, I think it's called paran paranolia. I should probably look that one up. Um, so numbers, songs, tarot, right? Uh, the women who were seamstresses um, at Chanel during Karl Lagerfeld's reign, they, and they were all women in the, um, and, and all the clothes got made by hand and there was a team of women and they devised their own system of tarot, which is incredible. Basically, if the scissors fell a certain way it meant this and if the uh, um, needles in that pin thing if they did this and they had measuring tapes and all these different tools in there but they had devised a system of tarot with all the objects that they had in their studio how amazing is that and they were able to accurately predict um, you know events and, and things that were going to happen some of you might have a, an animal thing. You see a cat walking across the road or you see a particular animal or a particular bird. And when people are trained to become Jyotish practitioners, they are told that, um, you know, as you're going to the client, you have to read everything. Read, start, the, the reading doesn't start when you sit and meet with the client. The reading starts as you're going to them and all the interesting things that happen along the way. So that's really interesting, right? And what's the other place where we get a lot of self-information from? Astrology. And that's the thing that we're all here for and that we all know and love. This is our system and it is an amazing system. And it has brought me a lot of clarity and insight and understanding um, as to who I am. And it's bringing me, brought me a lot of peace, a lot of, well, I couldn't have done it any other way. It was always going to go this way. So then there's a lot of self-blame that's instantly removed, right? So there's a huge amount of healing to come from a system like astrology. And I've got a note here saying that divine languages like astrology, like poetry, for example, you read some Shakespeare and you will see that man had a connection with the divine. He absolutely did. He had this phrase, what was it? Conscience doth make cowards of us all. 
you know, to me, the beautiful part of that sentence is the word all. You see, he was speaking on behalf of the one. Um, he was God's messenger, you know. He, he really understood it, a huge amount of things. Uh, amazing man. So divine languages like astrology, like poetry, and, you know, art and beauty and all these amazing things. These divine languages can help you get close to this place of no reason, right? That's where we want to go. We want to go to the place of no reason. But that's, they're still not it. And if you really, really want to go to that place of no reason and that place of true love and that place of, I guess you could say sort of where things are alive, where things are alive, there's living, you'll find living wisdom and, you know, all the, you'll find power and energy and all kinds of things. You will have to drop, you'll have to drop all of this. And some of this might take you there. That's the funniest thing, right? It's the weirdest thing. It's, some of this gets you there, and yet you have to drop it. You know, it, it's incredible. Some of this will clean your heart. Some of this will help you. But it's not it. Don't become attached is what I'm saying, right? Now, the other note that I've got here is that a clean heart and if this realm, see there's a wiggly line that I've got there. And let's say we scrub that out and you've got just a clean, pure heart. Let's say you've done some healing and this is clean, right? Absolutely clean. It's clean as a whistle. You will manifest instantly. You will manifest what you want. You think it, boom, it happens. If it's clean, 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 clean. And I have had a tiny experience of this, tiny, right, very tiny. I don't have this in my notes, do I? No, I don't. But I'm gonna, we're gonna go on a little journey here because <laughs> the clean heart manifests instantly. I experienced this in a tiny way, very tiny way. A couple of weekends ago, I went to a lecture by um, a, a lady who's a coach and a mentor to me. Her name is Heidi Sawyer. She's absolutely incredible. Please do check her out if you feel so inspired. She is phenomenal. And I spent a whole great big long day workshop with her. It was absolutely amazing. And by the end of the workshop, she said very pointedly that this is the cleanest group I've ever had. She's like, oh, you know, you came in with problems and she did work with us and she said but by the time now that I've finished she said I'm just amazed at how clean all of you are you just you've healed a lot is what she was saying yes she helped us but yes we met her halfway right it's it's a, it takes two to tango she you know and you have to show up and we showed up and she showed up and she did her thing and we did our thing of allowing right so apparently we allowed very well and she said, you're the, you're the cleanest group I've ever had, I've ever finished with. So as I was leaving, it was the most incredible thing. Um, a friend of mine just, I think, a short while ago, like two or three days, maybe it was a few days ago, she wrote to me a text saying, um, I wish you uh, orchestral music or something. It was very beautiful. And she said, but and I wish you fireworks. She said fireworks specifically and I remember seeing that word and I remember really thinking about it and I held the message in my hand and I thought, God, that would be nice. I'd love that. I'd love, I'd love some fireworks. As I was coming out of that Heidi Sawyer lecture, the moment I step out, and I've stepped out from this conference center so many times, the moment I stepped out, and I'm not joking, there were fireworks in the sky and I looked up and they just... It just happened for a few minutes as I was coming out and it was behind a mall. Now, I don't know why these were on. There's no Guy Fawkes. There's no, it's December. I have no idea. Yeah, when was the lecture? It was just, yeah, I mean, amazing, right? I have no idea why those fireworks were on, but, but it, it manifested, it, it happened. And to me, that is a little tiny example of a sort of manifestation. I'm, a, I'm able to manifest small things like that 
I would love to be able to manifest some big things, but I'm not there yet. It's quite a journey. The other example I have of this clean heart manifests instantly. Yes, I do remember. And let's see, do I need to... No, I think the rest I'll just talk through. I don't. We don't need a diagram. I'll just scrub all of this off. Um, the other example I have is in The Empire Strikes Back. We've got Luke Skywalker and Yoda tells him to go into the cave. And Luke takes his weapons with him. And that is very, 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 very significant because he takes his weapons, you know, that, that thing of the clean heart manifests instantly, like, and what I was saying about, you know, you gotta let go, you gotta get, let, let go of the tribal stuff, you gotta let go of your weapons, you gotta get, let go of your information, you gotta let go of the fact that, you know, but yeah, but I saw the number 22 three times, and that means, you know, that that, that property should be mine. Or, you know, oh, I, I heard that song and that's my sign and, and so therefore this thing should have happened. No, that, none of that works. It's nice and it helps and it can take you on a bit of a journey and we do need to listen to that stuff, but it's still not everything. You see, the universe doesn't want to be gamed or hacked either and the universe will shift the gold posts. You know, it'll be like, oh, you're getting very clever, aren't you? Shift. Right? It's kind of, um, how else are we going to be surprised and delighted? And when you're surprised and delighted, that's love hitting you and you're disarmed and you're, all the information drops out of you anyway and it's just amazing, right? Because we come to live the mystery. We don't come here to know everything first before we go. You see, how else do you get strong, right? So let's go back to that uh, Luke Skywalker, he goes into the cave, he's got his weapons. Who does he meet? He meets Darth Vader. He chops off his head and then he sees his own face in there, right? So for me, that's one of the most spiritual scenes in film anywhere ever because it's showing us that, you know, it's what you take to the party. If you take a bottle of champagne, well, you can have a good time. If you take weapons, you might be looking for a fight, right? So it's very interesting, isn't it? And this concept of what we have to put down, what we have to let go. And so many times I want to say to my clients, I want to say, put down the astrology chart. It's like, you, you know, you can't keep, at some point you'll become saturated. It won't help you. It won't help you. And it's like people who have a deck of cards and they keep drawing cards. And they're just going for it. And they're like, come on, give me the sign I want. Like they draw three cards. Oh, I don't like those ones. Let's get another one. You know, no, 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 no. That's all bad. You know, we've got, to, we've got to put this stuff down and live life, right? And do things like get courage and have trust and faith and turn up and, you know, or whatever, whatever it is, whatever the thing is that you need to do. All right, so let's take a look at my final notes, my closing notes. We've got 19 minutes, so I'm going to try and wrap this up now. So I've got a note here. Don't use astrology as a system of control. The reason I think astrology as a whole has a bad rap, bad reputation, I think people get irritated. They're a bit like, oh, you know, you're being a know-it-all. And that is an eighth house thing. And I know that um, in the comment that I had last time, there was talk about the eighth house. Yes, correct. Eighth house people can get a bad reputation. Again, it's Mars, it's leadership, it's, it's, um, you know, it's control, it's know-it-all, it's I know everything, it's um, you should follow me, I have all the answers. This is all terrible. And trust me, I know this because I made all these mistakes. <laughs> That's how I know. And I've done that, I, you know, and, you, and it, it's tempting to kind of whip out the skills and sort of uh, dissect someone in front of them. <laughs> it's not a good thing to do. I know, I know. But you see, it's hard, and, and it's hard when you've got access to a lot of information. And you can just you can see the whole thing and you go, well, I see everything. It's all here. It all makes sense. I see it all. And not everybody sees it all. And I, I know. I'm, I'm learning. Believe me, I'm learning a lot. So number one, don't use astrology as a system of control. 
that's what's given us a bad reputation you see I've got a note here yeah people use astrology to prove that they are right so that's a problem that's ego or two they are trying to chronically avoid their own life and that could be an eighth house kind of thing too right because people hide in the eighth house don't they people are very good at hiding eighth house people you know they hide they do and you know and they use their occult tools often to and you kind of and you're using those tools you're kind of going further up into the mind where really you need to be drawing from the earth and manifesting you know bringing yes bringing the starlight down and bringing the earth energy up and and you know live from the heart and, and manifest and create what you want here here on this earth right um, but sometimes people use these systems and they just get they get caught in a little loop up here and they're not coming down to the heart right or they're they're manifesting those thoughts and then and holding on to them via the third chakra as well right um, I've got a note here use this system to discover information about yourself don't be addicted to it that's a big message I have please don't be addicted to astrology and it's easily done uh, 22 minutes I'm gonna have to crack on learn to let go of what you discover absolutely now I've got a note here get good at letting go very simple message master letting go and you will be operating from the heart a lot more and it'll be absolutely amazing I've got a note here don't be seduced by information whether it's good or bad okay um, don't hang on to those signs let them come enjoy them it, it is talking to you the universe is talking to you but let it go let it come in let oh wow good I'm being given a breadcrumb I have to keep going in this way but don't hold don't cling on to it um, and then I've got a note here 22 minutes information should be secondary and you are primary okay always remember that you know information words astrology charts symbols signs these are all beautiful things and clearly if you're picking up any of those and using any of those you are a heart person right you absolutely are and you're very much on your way to true love and, and living from a space of love of course but like that's the information is not the end point it's deeper for you to go deeper deeper into a place of no reason right so you could call it love or you could call it no reason and these days I'm quite enjoying calling it no reason that's making a lot of sense to me at the 23 minute mark I'm going to wrap this up I'm going to say thank you so much for tuning in I hope this has been an enjoyable series please leave your comments below please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the comments uh, hopefully I'll get some time to to write back and um, and I'll of course write back to the ones from part two as well so thank you everyone so much for being part of this channel and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.